There's another passage that I think has missiological implication, if you will. Uh, it come, it's in uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, and this time it's the prophet Elijah. And Elijah is being fed by the crows, the roadkill or whatever crows bring to roadkill in Kareth Ravine. But sometime later, the brook dried up, as the brook does sometimes for us. And God sent Elijah on up north to Zarephath, and he comes to a widow's house. Why didn't he, is God send him to some wealthy person's house? We don't know. But God sent him to the widow's house, and Elijah says to the widow, please give me some, some food to eat. And the widow says, I can't. This is the very last oil and flour that I have. Elijah says, well, exercise your faith. Go ahead and make some of that oil and flour for me. Uh, I mean, go, go ahead and make uh, 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 some bread for me, and let's see what God does. She makes the bread. Next day, there's still oil and flour. The next day is the same. It doesn't run out. In, in fact, for the whole time that the drought lasted, which is about three years, the oil and flour didn't run out. What happens next in the story? We all know the story. The woman invites Elijah to stay in the upper room of her house, uh, which will always signify a place of prayer. We don't know how long he stayed there, uh, but we know the drought lasted three years, so maybe he's there a year, maybe he's there two years, whatever. Uh, the next thing that happens, of course, is the, uh, boy, the woman's boy gets sick, and he's so sick that he dies. And now the woman is distraught. Of course she's distraught. Why did you come here? Remind me of my sin. Kill my boy. Accusing uh, Elijah of uh, causing her this misery. It's a bit of a strange reaction uh, because a miracle is taking place every day. The oil and flour is not running out, but she is accusing Elijah. Elijah ignores that. He says to the woman, give me the boy. And I always tell my students that this is your next sermon title, give me the boy. We need to be telling our parents in our churches, give me the boy, give me the girl. Let us help you raise these children. Let us help you minister to these children. They have needs. Uh, give, give me the boy. Let us, let us help you with that. This is what Elijah says. He says to the woman, give me the boy. He takes him to the upper room where he's staying, where he's praying. Upper room often signifies a place of prayer. He stretches himself out hand to hand, chest to chest, mouth to mouth over the boy, making the woman's problem his problem, praying, being persistent. God answers Elijah's prayer. And imagine the joy of, in a woman's heart as Elijah comes back down the stairs with her boy alive. And in verse 24, she makes a remarkable statement. She says, now I know that you're a man of God and the word of your mouth is the truth from the Lord. Now I know, once again, that's what missions is all about, getting people to say, now I know. Now, I think it's quite interesting that every day in, uh, for the last year or however long Elijah had been there, there was a miracle taking place in her house or a relief and development project, if you will. There's food being provided every day, supernaturally, and yet it's only when Elijah cared for what was most important for her, to her, her son that she was able to say, now I know that you're a man of God and the word of your mouth is the truth from the Lord. And I actually see this many times in Compassion's projects and in, in other instances where people are caring for children. As we care for the children, adults will often say, now I know. I don't have to stone you. You really do love me. You care for our children. Now I know we don't have to burn your church. You care for us because you're caring for our children. And so God often uses that ministry to children to influence adults. Now, we don't care for children in order to reach adults. You, children are worth caring for in and of themselves. But very often, God does use that ministry, which is so important to people, to influence adults. We see that Jesus did the same thing. Um, in uh, the raising of the uh, Jairus' daughter. Uh, Jesus brings the parents in as he raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. The little girl doesn't do anything. She comes up from the dead, but 
Jesus is seeking to influence her parents. In the uh, story with Jesus and the boy who's, who's demon-possessed, Jesus asks the father, uh, do you believe? The father says, I believe, help my unbelief. So God is using ministry to the child to influence the faith of an adult. So it's not manipulative. It's not um, uh, using the child, but it is the uh, ministry to the child that God, Jesus used to influence adults. Thank you.